My first guest tonight is one of the busiest men in England. Yeah, he, he was here last night discussing a trip that he made to New York to study pornography there. Uh, yeah, he had other business there, but uh, he was actually going to give a lecture on that subject shortly. And um, it's always a pleasure to have him around. He's a great favorite on American campuses when he's in America. His production of The Merchant of Venice, uh, starring Sir Laurence Olivier, is currently touring in this country. It's a wonderful production. I just got to see it last week. And he has a book on Marshall McLuhan in the bookstores, and he's directed movies, and he used to be in Beyond the Fringe. And uh, he's probably done something since he was here last night, uh, climbed a mountain or written a book or something. Will you welcome, please, the remarkable Dr. Jonathan Miller. developed a distinctive walk, I must say. Every it's the result of last night, I think, and the fun that we had towards the end. Um. <laughs> <laughs> towards the end is the wrong way to put it. Uh, we got into a discussion last night of, um, oh, well, basically we can't get into it again tonight. We can't, no, I, think I, probably, I was, it might be difficult. Um, well, I was talking, we were talking about the English, uh, the humor revolving around the WC in England is mm. quite, but, but let's not get all into that again, as, as you said, that was the end of the show last night. Um, are you a fully qualified doctor still? I said Dr. Jonathan, and I don't know if that yes, was wrong. Yes, I, I suppose I am, really. I always feel that somehow the, um, that the qualification might be eroded successively with each year, but it's, it's still with me. Um, unless I do something outrageous, in which case it could be taken away from me. But I've never tried it out uh, since I left medicine uh, by doing anything in medicine. But it does still stand, and I think that by statute I, will, I, I can go on practicing as a doctor even if I never touch a patient for 30 years. I can lurch into some sort of therapeutic activity at the age of 80 and not be struck off as long as nothing disastrous happens. Um, you don't, so you don't have to take an exam every year? No, 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 I yeah. don't. That's nice. Your wife's a doctor. Yes, she's a doctor. An uh, MD, as we... Yes, as you call it. Uh, MD in England means something rather more superior. It means that you've actually taken some rather elaborate exam or done a thesis of some sort, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a higher qualification. But uh, it's the equivalent of what we call an MB here, which is simply the Bachelor of Medicine, which you get at the end of your six years of training. And I have that, and will have it forever. And, um, will you? Until anything disastrous happens. So I think perhaps yeah. I shall practice or start practicing when I'm 80. And does your wife make house calls? She, yes. What I've never asked a guest that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> just didn't sound right when I said um, it. Um. But you see, this is one of the features of English medicine, uh, which I think English doctors are often rather surprised about when they go to America. Mm. Uh, I think English doctors expect to make house calls. They regard it as part of uh, reasonable practice in medicine. And I think they're rather outraged at the thought that patients have to be bundled into the boots of cars uh, and brought to the office or the consulting room of the doctor uh, in America. Um, it certainly surprises me. I can't quite understand how it would be possible to practice office medicine anywhere mm -hmm. without house calls playing an essential part in the day. Of the I guess since the invention of aspirin, it's much easier. They just prescribe aspirin. And aspirin or cyanide, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> Do, do you have to, is malpractice suit a big um, problem here? I know in a, it's a very ugly subject in America. Um, well, no, it's not a major it... issue here. And I think the one very important reason for it, because there is not a strictly commercial relationship between the doctor and his patient, the patient doesn't view the doctor with the acute, often subliminal, but nevertheless acute resentment that he does in America, because um, Americans can see uh, a large number of doctors very, very wealthy on what, after all, is simply peddling on misery. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this produces the state of mind which leads to a lot of litigation. I think that you would get litigation in this country mounting if you return to a fee system. Yeah, the idea of getting gypped is stronger in, in well, the I other system. Well, I think it, it, it produces a sense of hostility. Yeah. Uh, and <clears throat> I think that one of the great uh, features of, the, of socialized medicine is the fact that that sort of commercial relationship is abolished. Um, and it's, it's what the sociologists have called recently a gift relationship in which uh, the patient feels that he has a right to draw upon some uh, large collective resource to which he's contributed not on a fee basis for the actual service which he gets, but yeah. simply to some reservoir which he has rights as a citizen to draw upon, in much the same way as the blood transfusion system works here in this country as well. The idea of paying for blood, for example, yeah. in this country is inconceivable. Um, and I think most Englishmen would be outraged at the thought of paying fees for blood. Or, or selling it, too? Or selling it. I think yeah. that uh, uh, people would think it was a monstrosity to do that. Um, and there's a recently a rather marvellous book by an English sociologist uh, 
on the whole question of blood transfusion called the gift relationship, and which he's used the, uh, the example of blood transfusion as a model for examining this sort of system where, in fact, you, you sever the commercial tie between one person and the person who supplies a service to him. By suddenly doing that, you have suddenly a much more productive relationship between the person who supplies the service and the client. It doesn't become a, a, a hideous competitive uh, issue in which the client is looking always specifically for the value uh, of the service in relationship to his fee. Um, it, it would be very unproductive if medicine were to be established again on that basis in this country, I think. Well, how can a person who once practiced medicine stand to leave it? Uh, I've thought that, I always thought medicine was something that goes into your blood. It does. Um, I find it very hard. I think probably the reason why I'm so keen to hang on to my qualification and feel that I am still a doctor is because it is so deeply embedded in me. Uh, I feel terrible attacks of remorse at the thought of having left medicine. And I always think every year that I'm going to go back and practice it again. I've gone back to it to, to some extent in that I now lecture in the history of medicine, and I've, I've gone back to an academic side of, of medicine, although I don't deal with patients. But I miss dealing with patients, and I miss the work in a hospital, and I, I miss diagnosis, and the whole business of medicine very much indeed. What kind of a kid were you as a, uh, as a student? Were you, uh, were you ever caned in school? Caning um, is in the papers here, I should mention to the American audience lately. Um, I got beaten once when I was about nine, uh, but I somehow avoided it at uh, my public school, which is equivalent of your prep schools or private schools. Mm. Um, I don't know how I managed to avoid it, perhaps by simply by a mixture of cowardice and priggishness. Uh, but I never really got beaten. I, was, I ran the risk of being beaten several times, but somehow managed to avoid it. Um, how do they beat you, actually? What part of the anatomy comes um, into play? It varies according to the sadistic interests of the... Uh, <laughs> of the exponents of the art. Um, it's almost always on the bottom. Uh, hmm. Usually it's done, I think, by people who simply do it uh, because they think it's the best punishment. But on the whole, there are very large numbers of exponents of the art who do it for the pleasure that it gives them rather than the pain that it gives the subject. Or rather, the pain that it gives the subject is part of the pleasure that it gives them. Um, and you can see them becoming sexually very excited by what they do. This is one of the, uh, it's one of the unpleasant things about being at a school where where beating takes place. Can you remember what precipitated your beating? Oh, I can hardly remember it at all. I think it was yeah. talking at table at lunch at some time when Mum was forbidden to do so. Um, there was, in almost all schools where beating takes place, there are systems of conduct marks. Mm -hmm. And when you reach a certain level, quite suddenly, you can see the shadow of the, the lash beginning to appear. Um, <laughs> I think it was a five conduct mark system that we had at prep school. Uh, and. Uh, and then you were beaten, and you had to beat off your conduct marks, you see. As you, as you went above five, yeah. the number of strokes that you had was proportional to the yeah. number of conduct marks that you got over the allowable uh, level. How hard do they hit you? Does it... Well, it varied. I mean, sometimes they draw blood. Um, this is, uh, this is a, uh, at Eton, for example, where they beat you bare. They draw blood, and there are schools in which, in which it happens very savagely and very sadistically. And also schools in which, as you saw in Lindsay Anderson's film, If, mm -hmm. where boys are allowed to beat boys, and a young boy who's, who's, whose sexual instincts are at that time very incoherent and vague and, can't, and, and rather uh, sort of ill-understood by himself, can often get carried away and do terrible things. Um, and uh, I, mean, I think it's a, it's a horrible and vile practice, and it ought not to be allowed in schools. Um, but it does go on, but mainly in public schools, in other words, in the prep schools, mm. in the private mm. schools. Um, it's always believed somehow that it forms character, and it's, indeed it does. Um, and this is one of the things which I complain about. Uh, and most your, people, uh, some of your greatest characters have been beaten, I expect. <laughs>